Well, hi everybody, it's Greg, and I want to talk about the new GoPro Hero 6 camera that I just purchased about three weeks ago. Uh, you're going to see a lot of videos out there, people comparing the Hero 6 to previous GoPros, probably the Hero 5 versus the Hero 6, or the, even the Hero 4 versus the Hero 6. There are those comparisons out there. Uh, and some people have already concluded, just from like day one, that the Hero 6 was not enough of an advancement to justify, first of all, $100 more than the Hero 5. And then if you already had a Hero 5, are, are you going to pay the extra $100 to upgrade? And is it even worth the trouble to upgrade if you're happy with your Hero 5? So a lot of comparisons already saying it's not worth the upgrade. But for me, it's a little bit of a different story because I'm upgrading to the Hero 6 from a Hero 2. <laughs> So let me let me tell you about my experience with GoPro. I'll, I'll briefly summarize my whole history with GoPro. I think the first time I saw a GoPro camera was probably at the NAB show as far back as maybe 2009 or somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly, but it was not yet an HD camera. So you see this little camera that they had, the, you know, the GoPro Hero, the standard definition version of the time. And they were showing... Uh, action videos that were shot with the camera, like surfing and skiing and skydiving, and they mounted it to a to an Indianapolis car and raced around the track. And these are the kinds of things they were showing off for this little camera. And I remember being skeptical for a few reasons. First of all, I just thought something so small, you're fighting against uh, the laws of optics <laughs> to try and have a sensor that small, a lens that small, and still get a great picture. I was just incredulous about that. It's a long time ago. Uh, and then the other thing is, I don't do the things they were showing off. I don't ski. I live in Utah. I don't ski. I certainly don't um, go surfing or, um, well, I, I have a thing about skydiving. Uh, my rule is, if uh, you're in an airplane, and the airplane is off the ground and moving, and there's nothing wrong with the airplane, and there's nothing wrong with the pilot, um, my rule is, stay in the plane. <laughs> Right. So, so I just kind of blotted that out. Like, I don't need this camera. It's neat. I, th that's great that people do this with this tiny camera, but I, I don't need that. And so then it was maybe, uh, again, like a year or two later, uh, I was with the family, you know, playing around at the lake and thinking to myself, oh, it would be fun if I could snap some pictures with some sort of waterproof camera. At the time, I was using a digital SLR camera and thinking, I love my pictures, but, oh, I'd, I'd feel a little bit better going out in the water and having some fun out there in the water if I knew I had a waterproof camera. So I started investigating the possibilities of some sort of just point-and-shoot pocket digital camera that was also waterproof. And Canon had one. It was like $300. And I thought about it. Oh, that's a lot of money, and I wouldn't use it that often. So that thought just kept coming and then fading away because I don't go to the lake that often. And so it was, uh, it was the fall of 2011 that uh, my birthday was coming up. I wasn't quite sure what to get. And I see this ad for Best Buy, and they just happened to feature the GoPro camera. So uh, it, it suddenly hit me. Well, there's a waterproof camera. And by this time, I did realize that it was an HD camera. They'd already introduced the HD GoPro. So, uh, so that's what I ended up with. So the GoPro Hero 2 from the fall of 2011, that's what I've been using. And um, I, what I started doing with it, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I would use the suction cup and mount it to the car and drive around. And, and then I would turn that into time lapses in the computer. I'd do some fun things with that. Um, but not, I didn't really do a lot underwater with it. And I didn't start surfing or skiing or skydiving just because I had a little GoPro action camera. So, um, I, like I said, I've had that for quite a few years. And I also have other video cameras like this one that I use for most of my work and, and most of the videos that I, that I want to make. So the, the GoPro is just kind of for specialized things. I can see, oh, there's a good use for this kind of camera. But f for most other things, I have other cameras that I can use. And so I think this happens with everybody with, with something like this. After, after years, you just tend to not use it as often and so the batteries were starting to get old and not holding the charge well and it just became a less useful camera and so 
this year, which is 2017 as I'm recording this, I got close to the end of the summer and I thought, well, I wonder if I could just get some new batteries for my old GoPro Hero 2 and and start using it again, have some fun. So I found a place, the batteries, the third party batteries, because GoPro doesn't support this camera anymore from what I can understand. Uh, don't sell accessories or batteries specifically for this camera anymore. So uh, I bought some batteries dirt cheap from a third party. They worked great. They, I've got some batteries that now will power this for over an hour on a charge. And, and I, you know, I picked up a handful of them. So I had some fun with it. And as I was uh, starting to get back into finding ways to have fun with the GoPro camera, I got an email this fall from GoPro saying, hey, we got an all new Hero 6. Do you want to try it out? So I thought, yes, I do. <laughs> so, so the thing that, that really intrigued me about this camera, I knew that in a lot of ways it was going to be better. Uh, just better technology, a better sensor, better circuitry inside. Everything was obviously going to be better after six years of being a, a six year newer camera. But the, the one feature that really got to me that I liked was the ability to do uh, slow motion uh, and also time lapse fast motion in camera. So uh, with this older one, when I want to do time lapse, there are a couple options. I can either have it shoot a sequence of still images at a certain interval and then build those into a single video file in the computer later on, or I could just shoot regular video and speed that up using the computer later on. But this one, wow, you can set it to shoot, uh, you can do the still picture image sequence thing, or you can have it shoot one frame of video at a certain interval. And when that's done, it creates an MPEG video file straight out of the camera that I can take that and put it right in my computer. And it's a finished time lapse already. Oh, I thought that was amazing. So I, that, was, that was the one thing that I thought was pretty cool. The other thing is the ability to shoot slow motion. So you shoot at a high frame rate and then you slow it down later in the computer to like a regular rate. So this one will go in, in HD 1080p resolution. It will shoot up to 240 frames per second. And if you're used to using 24 frames per second in your finished video, so that so you can slow down your slow motion to one tenth of normal speed using that. Um, so that, well, that's interesting. I usually shoot at 30 frames per second just because I like to, but even, even then it's, it's one eighth of normal speed if I take something at 240 and slow it down to 30. So, um, so that was the intriguing thing about getting a GoPro Hero 6. And to me, you say, well, that's $500. That's a lot for a GoPro camera. That's more than the, you know, the previous model. But then I think about it, and I think this GoPro Hero 2 that I got, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was $300 at the time. And you have to remember that at the time, it did not include uh, an LCD screen on the back. That was an extra, an extra add-on accessory. Also didn't have Wi-Fi. That was another add-on extra accessory, which actually wasn't even available when I first got the camera. I had to wait a few months. So you had the Wi-Fi backpack or you had the LCD screen backpack. Uh, you couldn't use them all both at the same time. So either you have uh, the convenience of a little viewfinder back there or you have Wi-Fi and, you know, just use your iPod or iPad or phone or whatever for a for a screen but uh, so so already you know you're you're pushing close to five hundred dollars just with the accessories I was getting to get what this one offers built in built in Wi-Fi um, and of course a built in touch screen which if you if you ever had to change settings using the older GoPro with no screen on the back. It's just kind of a hassle. You've got two buttons and you're scrolling through and looking at this tiny LCD readout to figure out what, what your setting is. And uh, of course, it's much easier with the touch screen on this GoPro Hero 6. So in that sense, $500 seemed like a pretty good, pretty good idea for me. Plus, I suppose 
I don't know how many GoPro Hero 2s are out there still working today, not just because the batteries have gone bad, but maybe because people have <laughs> abused them enough. <laughs> maybe because I don't go surfing and scuba diving and uh, skiing, I haven't broken this camera yet. It still works just fine if you put a good battery in it. So those of you who ever had one before, it's probably long gone, right? So anyway, I got this one. Uh, tell you what I like about the GoPro Hero 6 so far. It has uh, waterproof without any special case. So with the with the older one, of course, you put it inside one of these cases, and then it's waterproof. This one waterproof, not of course not as waterproof as having a, a, a big case like this, but still waterproof to like. I don't know, 10 meters or something like that, which for most of what I do, if I'm going to splash it around, take it out in the rain, whatever, that's just fine. Even in a swimming pool, that's just fine. I noticed some videos already complaining about well, the Hero 5, which is a very similar design as far as the waterproofing is concerned. People have, have had bad experiences where it was not waterproof. They got water inside of it and wrecked the camera. And I can see where these little doors, there's two doors on it, one to access the battery and the memory card down here. And the other door is for accessing, um, if you want to, oh, I turned it on by mistake. Door's a little bit fiddly sometimes to snap open, there it is. This will give you access to a micro HDMI connection and a USB-C connection for charging the battery or transferring files. And so those little doors have little rubber seals and you gotta get them you got to get the seal just right and you got to snap the door, make sure it's all the way closed. And I don't know if that was the problem with people that were complaining that their camera wasn't waterproof. So I got a little bit, uh, wasn't quite sure about that. I'm, I'm, I have on order this style of case for the, for the GoPro Hero 6, just in case I decide I've I want to really submerse it in water. I'm not going to take any chances. But for, for most of what I do, where the camera might get a little wet, might get out in the rain, just using this, uh, this frame that comes with it, that's going to be plenty sufficient and sufficient waterproofing. And again, I'm doing a lot of mounted to the car and drive around and do time lapse or, or do things like that. Or just if you want to stick it in a, a tight place where you can't... I'm just saying there are times when the GoPro camera has its function, its place. It's the perfect camera for certain situations, not all of them. And I'm happy to have this in my bag of tricks. Now, I'll give you some examples of some, uh, some of the time lapse and some of the slow motion stuff I've been able to do with this camera. Uh, a couple notes about that, however. I when you take it all the way up to 240 frames per second using um, you know 1080p resolution if you go up to 4k the fastest speed you get is 60 frames per second but if you're down there at 1080p you can go up to 120 frames per second and still have it be an h264 but when you go up to 240 it's h265 so it's a little bit different codec so maybe make sure your computer can handle that I actually use some pretty old software right now, and so I have a conversion thing I can do. I, 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 take, I take the 240 frame per second file, I put, bring it in the computer, and I just change it to Apple ProRes at 240 frames per second. Then I stick it in, again, old software, Cinema Tools, and change the frame rate to something else, like 24 or 30 frames per second. That's how I get my results uh, from that. Um, so again, just make sure it's H.265, maybe your computer doesn't quite handle that or your software doesn't quite handle that, but you can figure that out. Another thing that uh, I just want to kind of show that I'm really happy about this, uh, one of the f problems that you had on the older GoPros was a rolling shutter effect. People would call it a jello effect. And, and what it basically means now, imagine that uh, you've got your full resolution of your video images. If it's HD, it's uh, 1080 horizontal lines. And with some cameras, some sensors, you're, every second or every what, 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second, every time you switch, you 
record a new frame. It's refreshing every one of those lines of video all at the same time. And then with a rolling shutter, it's actually kind of starting from the top and refreshing each line of video down to the bottom and then recording a new frame. And, and so depending on the speed at which that's happening, um, you could have some, some uh, artifacts from that. So with the rolling shutter problem, if your camera is not mounted really solid, if it's if your camera is kind of wiggling like this, or if it's mounted to something that is also wiggling like this, you tend to uh, it, it's it's recording those upper lines of resolution at a different time, just slightly, just fractions of a second, different from the bottom. So as you're doing that frame after frame after frame, you could you could have a, a straight up uh, vertical object in there, but camera's doing this, so it's going to look wobbly. And that's why you get that rolling shutter wobbly effect. I, I didn't do a lot of stuff with this older GoPro that would uh, make it have that effect, but I would sometimes see that and I recognize what it was. So far, without trying real hard to go one way or another to, to really push this camera to an extreme, I have yet to see a wobbly rolling shutter jello-y effect off the new GoPro Hero 6. I don't know exactly why that's happening. I'm sure it's just improved circuitry in there. The fact that this sensor is capable of doing 240 frames per second probably means that even if it's uh, writing those lines of resolution from top to bottom instead of all at once, it's doing it so fast that you're just not gonna get that rolling shutter wobbly effect in there. So that's one thing I've noticed already. I'm going to experiment with this a little bit more and maybe give you an updated video uh, things like being able to shoot outside in low light or inside in low light. And of course, the the older GoPro was optimized for a full daylight shoot out there on the ocean, in the snow, whatever. And, and in low light, it really did not perform well. And that's OK. Like I said, it's not the camera for every purpose. Whereas the newer GoPro Hero 6 does much better in low light than what I'm used to with this little action camera. I, you know, I love having both of them, and I'm going to keep using uh, both of them uh, until until something happens. I suppose if there's a really risky situation, and I'm going to mount the camera somewhere where it could something disastrous could happen, it'll probably be this camera, <laughs> you know. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep it going. It is useful for things, and and there are times when having two GoPro cameras mounted, you know, one facing one way, one another could be very useful and so uh, it's not and i know gopro has a 360 degree camera that they're it's it's not quite out yet as i'm making this video but i'm not going to worry about that just yet again that's you're asking for a, a more complicated computer more complicated software than i have at the moment in order to process all that data <laughs> and make videos for that 360 degree gopro fusion camera but in the meantime that's my initial thoughts if you've got a GoPro Hero 2 and for some reason you have neglected to use it lately for whatever reason, maybe the batteries are kind of eh, whatever. And uh, first of all, you can get new batteries. You can keep it running. And second of all, if you're thinking, well, I, I kind of like to have an action camera for things, but I don't know. I just don't really use it anymore. Pick up one of these guys and you'll start doing more and more with uh, the GoPro camera. Just fun stuff. Time lapses. Again, I have this larger video camera that is capable of doing time lapses in the box and you know the finished video that comes right out of the camera is a time lapse video already sped up uh, but there are times when it's just so much more convenient to you just put this gopro camera in the frame and put that you know mount it to a little stand and stick it out on the porch and point it at the pretty sunset and and just let it go, you know? What could be more convenient? You're going to find yourself shooting more than you used to shoot just because it's so convenient to do certain things with this camera. Anyway, I'll, I'll follow up and keep you posted as I learn new tricks and things I can do with the GoPro Hero 6. I like it, and it was, for me, totally worth the upgrade. <laughs>